Well, so far life in the Premier League has been going pretty good for us here at Plymouth Argyle, but unfortunately, the Wayne train now hasn't scored a goal for two and a half months. Hopefully that changes when we take on Wayne Rooney's West Ham, because then we take on Liverpool, and he probably won't score in that game. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 15 of The Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today with Plymouth Argo. We take on West Ham down near the bottom of the Premier League, but these days managed by Wayne Rooney. And off the back of that, we take on Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool near the top of the table and can hopefully create a bit more of a gap on the teams in the relegation zone at the start of December. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode as well as a little bit of a contract and transfer window update, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but in yesterday's episode, we took on both Arsenal and Chelsea. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. I actually started off with a very good win over Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, and then we got run down late by Arsenal in somewhat unfortunate circumstances. Off the back of that, things haven't actually been going too well for us in the Premier League, truth be told. We did have a couple of tricky games away against some teams doing quite well in Crystal Palace, Aston Villa and Tottenham. And in between that, a home game with Newcastle. Yeah, not been going too well off the back of yesterday's episode, which is a bit disappointing. First up, we did take on Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park at that stage. Both teams quite similarly placed on the Premier League table. We went down early in this game as you can see based on the XG match story, well and truly deservedly so as well. We didn't do too much in the first half, and Decore put a chance away, but thankfully, Callum Wright, he scored a goal before being taken off down on a red heart with a half hour left. We did a bit more in this game in the second half, but definitely did get outplayed. So actually quite happy with a point from that game, considering that we were well and truly on the back foot, so we'll definitely take a point from that game going into our next one, which was against Aston Villa, a team that we did beat pre-season, but they're right near the top of the Premier League table. Unfortunately, we got thrashed here. Suhail Galase, a player that I used to have on FMOE back at Cardiff, he scored two first half goals in an Aston Villa domination. We we're in the pink on this day, as you can see, yet again, didn't get up to too much compared to the opposition XG-wise, albeit we potentially should have scored a goal and Ollie Watkins sealed it off the back of a Galassé assist in the second half, so a poor performance there, and we lose 3-0. That was a bit disappointing, probably our most disappointing performance of the season so far, considering the scoreline, albeit against the team, as I said, who are near the top of the Premier League table. Then off the back of that, we went back home for our only home game since yesterday's episode, and took on a Newcastle team. Also, around about where we were on the Premier League table, unfortunately, Callum Wilson, he popped up with a goal about 35 minutes into this one, which was a bit unfortunate, because up until that point, we had been the team who well and truly were on the front foot this time around. But thankfully, just before halftime, Callum Wright got on the end of a Reese Williams ball and put it away to make sure that we did pick up a point from this game. A little bit disappointing that we didn't get more, because this time, based on stats, potentially should have won that game, but off the back of that previous draw we picked up against Crystal Palace. Probably can't be too disappointed with only getting one point from this one. And then off the back of that, we took on Tottenham. We'll actually show you guys the highlights from this game because I made a change late and it's going to influence what we do do in these two games potentially in today's episode. Yet again, we go off to a slow start in this game. And to be fair, it didn't take Tottenham too long to get on the score sheet. Only five minutes in and Giovanni La Celso curves that one nicely into the top left corner. And Tottenham held a fairly comfortable 1-0 lead for most of the game. Of course, Tottenham actually struggling quite a bit. In the save, but when I brought on the likes of Ian Paveda with around about a half hour left, I did go into an attacking mindset and it really kicked into gear with 20 minutes left. Paveda getting a goal there and only a few minutes later gets on the end of a Randall ball over the top and gives us a 2-1 lead. So I did think there for a minute the attacking mentality might just help us run away with three points here. But unfortunately, somehow Oliver Skip gets on that ball. It beats Kesler Hayden in the air. So unfortunately, that comeback doesn't quite result in a win, but in the end, a pretty good effort to get something out of that game at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, a two-all draw. But, as you can see, when we did go to that attacking mentality late, our XG certainly improved, and we did grab those goals thanks to that big bench performance there 
from Ian Pervader. Hopefully he can reproduce that if we need him to at some stage during today's episode. So it's not been the greatest run of form off the back of that loss to Arsenal second up in yesterday's episode. And what that means is we have sunk down the Premier League table just a little bit these days in 13th, albeit still nine points clear of Sheffield United in 18th spot, West Ham just below them. And that's what makes this first game of today's episode quite important. Hopefully we can at least pick up a draw from this one and make sure we keep that gap on those teams in the relegation zone to nine points. If we win it, that's even better. We can extend that gap out to 12. But West Ham have actually just recently got themselves off the bottom of the Premier League table. And that was because they've won their first game of the season. And that was under their new manager and Wayne Rooney. Because finally, they got rid of David Moyes who's just been awful for them so far this season, lost every game in the Premier League by three draws and also got knocked out of the Carabao Cup by Wimbledon. So David Moyes is out at West Ham and it is Wayne Rooney and they'll come to this game with a fair bit of confidence as well off the back of a 2-0 win over Nottingham Forest, a team just below us on the Premier League table, albeit a team with a far worse goal differential than we do have here at Plymouth Argo. But before we get into that, a little bit of a club update as well. First up, I did eventually renew the contract of our first choice goalkeeper here in Mike Cooper, so that's good. He's around now, I believe, until 2027. In fact, we'll just put the contract offer in, so we can't actually look at that yet, but you should be accepting that. It is going to be going through to 2028. So Mike Cooper, he will be here for a little while. We'll just make sure that that does go through now and make sure that he does sign on to that. But there's the contract that he will be on, and promise-wise, he will be a cup goalkeeper from next season, so it does mean that we should be able to improve in our first choice goalkeeping area coming in to the start of next season, which is good because there's a Brazilian goalkeeper who looks like a major upgrade who's not too expensive. Hopefully, we can get him here for our second season touchwood in the Premier League. So Mike Cooper, he is staying around. Still don't know if we'll keep Julio Pligazello. So far, hasn't played too much in the Premier League this season. We might be letting go of him potentially in the January transfer window. And also, Almami Toure is probably going to be on his way out because he has requested transfer, not getting enough game time here. At Plymouth Argyle, to be fair, he is worth just under £8 million, so that won't be too bad for a player that we did pick up on a free going in the second half of the championship last season. So we'll see how much we do get from him. That'll probably be an area that we do need to do something in in the transfer window come the start of next week, an extra right back option in place of Almami Toure, who no longer wants to be here at Plymouth Argyle, and to be fair, can't blame him too much. He hasn't played for us too much since he joined us last season. And these days, the likes of Ryan Fredericks and even Sebastian Hausner are above him because of their bench versatility. So Mami Toure might be out the door here at Plymouth Argyle. But thankfully, even if we don't get that much money for him when he does leave, we have had our transfer funds boosted here at Plymouth Argyle because we're doing such a good job in the Premier League. According to the board, so our transfer budget has been bumped up to just under £9.5 million, which is very nice, and also our wage budget now in a much healthier situation than it was off the back of signing that extra defensive midfielder in Daniel Phillips that is now gone up to being 41 k over what we are currently spending, so a little bit of money spare there, which hopefully we can use on an improvement on our Mummy Tour, and maybe as well we could get in a third goalkeeper early just in case the injury curse does strike. Hopefully, though, that is not the case. But fair to say, goalkeeping injuries are a little bit more prevalent in FM24, so maybe that won't be the worst idea. So a couple of things we might do there in the January transfer window, which we'll get into come the start of next week. But going into today's episode, as I mentioned, we did go onto an attacking mentality late in that Tottenham game. Also, Chuck Jacob Graves and the right winger, in that case, Pervader, onto attack. And that's what really kicked us into gear so we're going to try it for this first game of today's episode albeit without changing the roles just the attacking mentality that's the only change we're making to the previous system that we were using the one that we changed earlier in the week putting Gibson onto a central defender instead of a ball playing defender but we'll see how this gets on here and see if we need to put both those players onto attack to get the best out of it but I felt this is a good game where we could go attacking against the West Ham team who so far this season have been struggling albeit as I said that has changed off the back of them getting rid of David Moyes they've picked up a win in the Premier League over Nottingham Forest and also they bet Zoya in the Conference League looks like at the moment it is Mohamed Kudus doing the damage for those guys 
at West Ham, but hopefully we can pick up a good result against these guys, especially because this is at home park, before we take on Liverpool, because that will probably be a bit of a struggle, and also we can hopefully get our strikers to score some goals, not only Ben Wayne, who hasn't scored since that 5-0 win over Leeds United a couple of days ago, but even before then, Andre Lucas Goodjonsson hasn't scored since our 5-2 win over Ipswich Town, so it's now been a fair while since either of our strikers have scored a goal here at Plymouth Argyle. Hopefully that will change during the course of today's episode, albeit I think this West Ham game it is more likely to be the case in than that Liverpool one, because Liverpool, they're pretty good at the moment, even though Ryan Gravenberch for some reason is unregistered, and also Andrew Robertson might be missing for that second game of today's episode, but hopefully we can pick up a decent result here and move ourselves up the table a little bit more and get a bit clearer of the relegation zone. And thankfully we've got no injuries going to this first game of today's episode. Also, it does mean our best choice 11 as well as venture available for this one. So hopefully we can get the job done as we really should be based on our form so far this season over a West Ham team who have been struggling, albeit there could be a little bit of new manager bounce with Wayne Rooney in charge. But hopefully we can get one over him here. I'm pretty sure we beat him a couple of times when he was at Birmingham in the championship last season. I'm pretty sure they lost one of the playoff semi-finals to one of Ipswich Town, or I believe it was Middlesbrough, but Ipswich Town, of course, did win the final of that. That is why they are in the Premier League, but there you can see our form of late hasn't been too great, especially off the back of that loss to Arsenal second up in yesterday's episode, but before then, a win over Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Hopefully, we can refine that form. West Ham also going with a 4-2-3 one, and hopefully, we can keep them down in the relegation zone. To be fair, I think they'll stay there anyway, but hopefully we can make sure that they do stay there and build a bit more of a gap on those teams who are in a relegation battle and maybe try and get on a good run here in December, especially off the back of those games against Liverpool and Brighton off the back of that. A few more winnable looking ones and hopefully we can get ourselves towards a mid-table spot for our first season in the Premier League. First highlight though is in favour of West Ham coming up to the 10 minute mark. Kufal was on the ball, but thankfully we do get the ball back there through Graves. Clear it, but West Ham now on the attack from that clearance. Now Lucas Paqueta starts to cut inside. It's a really good individual run. This one, our defence does absolutely nothing. James Ward-Prowse picks up an assist, but not too much really. That's a really good individual goal from Lucas Paqueta. And this is not the result I was hoping for first up. In today's episode, he had a lot of work to do there. Back to goal from outside the box, but just jogs for our defence. A couple of players there on that right-hand side, really not getting stuck in as much as I would hope they would, and we are 1-0 down early, and up until that stage two, stats-wise, was looking like we were the team who were on the front foot, so that is a disappointing start to this one, hopefully we can find a way back, and also disappointing, because there were signs of encouragement once we did go attacking in that previous game, where we did take on Tottenham, hopefully we get shown something here with the next highlight halfway through the first half, a thrown inside of the final third, the Wayne train, can you get back and goal scoring touch, although Whitaker here in a ton of space, but unfortunately he tries to beat Ariola there at the near post, can't quite do it, but a good chance there for us to grab an equalizer, unfortunately it doesn't come off, but now a corner Buckley will try and put this one far post, Reese Williams or Graves there, got their head on the end of that one, Ariola didn't get on the end of it, so a big chance there for us to grab an equalizer as well, but unfortunately we missed both chances, the corner and the previous one to Whitaker, but thankfully back on the attack, only a few minutes later now, Buckley plays the ball out to Kesler Hayden in a ton of space. Inside the box, can he find someone and try and screw it? He'll take the shot on himself. Unfortunately, though, Ariola makes a good save from a tight angle. So starting, be on the front foot a little bit more here in the second part of this first half. And off the back of that chance to our right back, yet another throw on this time down that right-hand side. Kesler Hayden plays that one back out to Gibson. Now Buckley will find the Wayne train. A big chance for him to get back on the score sheet, but unfortunately Ariola comes up with a really good save there. Definitely feels like here we're knocking on the door to grab an equaliser, but unfortunately haven't quite got there so far on the Wayne train with a poor pass there trying to link up with Farias off the back of that throw. Now unfortunately, with only a few minutes left in the first half, we might be going into the sheds at a 1-0 deficit, and based on stats, not really too sure how we're behind in this game. Lucas Paqueta made the most of that one chance that we did see to West Ham. We definitely grew into that game in the second part of the first half. And unfortunately, lots of good chances did not put the ball in the back of the net. And Reese Williams is on a yellow card here. So we're going to make a sub. Hausner can come on for him. And also Morgan Whitaker on a 6.4. 
Ian Pabater off the back of that really good performance, those two goals he did score in that comeback draw against Spurs. We'll bring him on and hopefully that might just help us grab something out of this game at the very least. Otherwise, that gap to the teams in the relegation zone is going to close by a couple of points, but hopefully those changes can keep us on the front foot and maybe help us put the ball in the back of the net during the second half because we're definitely getting the chances to six shots on target, a 2.3 XG, but unfortunately so far, no goals. And at the moment, looking like we might get FM'd here by West Ham as we make our way into the last half hour. We will chuck both Graves and Paveda onto attack and also the Wayne train on a 6.3 and also more importantly, a yellow card. Good Johnson can come on for him and hopefully he can score a goal. He's been out of the goal scoring action longer than the Wayne train. He's been out of the goal scoring action now for around about three months. But still now with only 20 minutes left, it is still 1-0 to West Ham. So this is getting a little bit concerning as Buckley now is on a red hut. But before you can make that change, there is a highlight. Thankfully, we do keep the ball. Here's the Hayden with a pass. Just finds Buckley. He has a shot, but unfortunately does get blocked, albeit they try and clear their lines there with a pass. But thankfully, Gibson does intercept that one. Now, Paveda on the edge of the box. Now, Doig brings him down. I'm pretty sure, though, this might be just a free kick. Hopefully, that's not the case. If it is a penalty, the Wayne train's not on the field. It's not too sure who would be taking it. We'll just wait here to see what Anthony Taylor does say. And unfortunately, it is indeed just a free kick. We'll see if we get shown what happens from it. Paveda is going to line this one up. Hopefully, can try and curve this one top right corner. Other than he comes in for and Morgan Whitaker actually takes a block here and we'll have a corner. Hopefully we can do something from this. But off the back of conceding that first goal, we've been piling the pressure here on West Ham, but unfortunately not found a way to beat Ariola. We can't get someone on the end of that one, and Kufal will boot that one clear. Kiers the Hayden just loops that one forward with a header to a West Ham player. And now two stoppages left, but two players down to Red Hearts. Buckley's actually playing quite well. So we'll bring on Nikola Ilyev for Fukundo Farias and also Tony Springett. For Cullum Wright, also Adam Randall as a ball wing midfielder. He can go on to support, so a lot more positive duties here the last couple of minutes of this game. Hopefully, it does pay off. And thankfully, Springett wins the ball there as West Ham. We we're looking to get back on the front foot now. Springett just inside of the last 10 minutes. Does his man there down the left hand side, tries to square that one for Ilyev, but it's still a fair way outside the box. Now, Kesler Hayden, he'll put a ball here into the mixer for Good Johnson on the volley. And Andre Lucas Good Johnson coming on for the Wayne train is finally back in the goals. Hopefully that will continue over to the Wayne train in our next game. Now, off the back of that, we will just chuck Graves onto support instead of attack. So hopefully we're a bit more solid defensively. Hopefully he can still do a decent job for us in that role and we don't concede like we did in that previous Tottenham game that we show you guys highlights-wise. But that is a good finish from Good Johnson from a ball from Kesler Hayden, which to be fair, was a little bit behind him, but thankfully we've got this back to one all and should at least be getting something. Out of this game, hopefully we might be able to kick on here late and maybe grab a winner, because certainly feels like this is a game that we do deserve to win based on stats. And now we might actually chuck Graves back onto attack. We'll just make sure that they did go through, because sometimes that screen at the bottom can be a little bit glitchy and not quite showing the role correctly for our players. But now into the last couple of minutes of added time, six minutes there is, and there is a late highlight here for West Ham, Bowen, he'll find Johnson down the left-hand side, tries to play a ball over the top, thankfully Halsner gets on the end of that one and heads it back to Mike Cooper. Gibson plays this one out to Graves, hopefully we might create a late chance here. Spring up plays that one forward, but unfortunately, Martel will get that one back for West Ham. A good there, though, that's a poor pass. Randall can get on the end of that one. Now Gibson plays that one back to Mike Cooper. Halsner up to Randall, does well now to find Kiesler Hayden. And a bit of space can create one more goal off the back of what he just did. Now that is right on the edge of the box. But unfortunately, again, I think that is only a free kick. But it might give us a late chance here to try and grab a goal to give us all three points. But I'm pretty sure, yet again, this is not a penalty. Indeed, that is the case. But a free kick. And I think Paveda will be on this one yet again. But this time, might be looking for a body at the far post. In fact, it's Buckley headed down by Lewis Gibson, his first goal of the season. He'll pull away past Areola, and we might escape here with all three points, albeit we are waiting for a VAR check. But thankfully, the goal has been awarded, and in a game that looked like for a while there, we might get a little bit FM'd off the back of that early Lucas Piquetta goal. We go very attacking late on in terms of our player roles and get back into this one through those goals. 
to both Good Johnson and a late one to Lewis Gibson, his first one of the season. And we just find a way to pick up a 2-1 win, albeit stats-wise, not really too sure how he didn't win that game more comfortably. But thankfully, we're back in winning touch for the first time since that Chelsea game at Stamford Bridge. It does mean our gap on the teams in the relegation zone will be extended now out to around about 12 points, which is very nice indeed. But thankfully, it's a come-from-behind victory, two goals inside the last 10 minutes. Does cancel out that early one to Lucas Paqueta. And we pick up a 2-1 win over West Ham. Hopefully, we can back it up with a decent effort as we take on Liverpool. So it took us a while to get on the score sheet there, but thankfully one of our strikers is finally back in the goals and off the back of that Lewis Gibson with a very deep goal and injury time does mean we pick up three points over West Ham these days. Still in 13th, but now 12 points through of those teams in the relegation zone to be fair. That might not change as we're about to take on a Liverpool team who are only just behind Manchester City, who to be fair so far, the only unbeaten team in the Premier League. But Liverpool so far have actually lost games to Man United and Arsenal, albeit those we were both away from home also. They did draw away at Nottingham Forest. So based on that, we might be in here with a sneaky chance like we did against Manchester City of pinching some points off them at home park. But Fiat Sailors Liverpool team is going to take a ton of beating, albeit as I said before, we have already taken points off some good teams at home park this season in the likes of Manchester City. But so far, these guys have been in very good form, albeit they have lost their last couple of games in the Champions League against Bayern Munich and also, more surprisingly, against PSV Eindhoven. So certainly not going as well as you might expect, especially in the month of November, as it also includes that loss at Old Trafford to Manchester United. So it does look like here at the moment they are struggling on their travels just a little bit, but still, it's fair to say that Liverpool will be the raging hot favourites going in to the second game of today's episode, but hopefully we're able to grab something from this game and keep ourselves a little bit clear of those teams in the relegation zone. And thankfully, we haven't had to make any changes off the back of that first game. It is only a couple of days later, but thankfully everyone nice and rested off the back of that late comeback win against West Ham. So it does mean we can put out exactly the same squad and hopefully they can carry on where they left off in that West Ham game and might be able to give Liverpool just a little bit to think about here. Definitely not expecting us to win this game, but if we can grab a point from it, that would be pretty good going to some games in the rest of December that do look a bit more winnable against the likes off the back of a Brighton game against teams like Nottingham Forest. But there we are, as I said before, the same as we were for that previous game. Liverpool, as I said, not actually playing that well. Also interesting to see Cody Gakpo up front. No Darwin Nunez. Bit of an interesting lineup there for Liverpool. But based on table position, they should be the heavy favourites going in to the second game of today's episode. Hopefully, though, we might be able to find a way to pinch something from them. And there's a highlight here immediately from the kickoff in the rain here at home park. We get the ball forward to Whitaker nice and early. He takes that towards that right corner flag, plays that one back in to Kane Kessler Hayden. Squeeze that one nicely for Farias, but unfortunately, that shot does get blocked. We'll see if that was the opening highlight. Indeed, it was so an early chance for us to potentially get on the score sheet, but unfortunately, Liverpool's defence was organised early, and it's still nil all coming up to the 10-minute mark, albeit we do see there Virgil van Dijk is on a yellow card. Maybe that's something we can make the most of in the rest of this first half. It'll be interesting to see how he does play under that caution, but off the back of that Liverpool, certainly the team who have been on the front foot, five shots to win, I believe that was, before this next highlight did start, but yet again, we are on the ball, Callum Wright, Starts the cut inside, but unfortunately, a couple of loose touches, and McAllister does end up with the ball. But it's a really poor touch from Virgil, and the Wayne train gets a gift from BVD. He puts it away, and he is back in the goals, and we take a 1-0 lead here at home park over Liverpool. It's a big gift, but we'll take it, and the Wayne train scores his first goal in nearly three months. A pretty similar situation to Good Johnson, but for some reason, Virgil... Didn't quite control that ball from Allison as well as he should have. And the Wayne train with a simple finish pretty much into an open net. And we make it 1-0 completely against the run of play. But off the back of the start of that West Ham game, I think we'll take that. Because that did look like for a while we were going to get FM'd just a little bit. But off the back of that, now Liverpool are on the attack. Will be at Luis Diaz. Not quite expecting that ball. Now a good chance for us here on the counter-attack. Nice ball there from the Wayne train to Farias. And it does fall there to Morgan Whitaker with a wonderful strike from outside the box. The Wayne train will get an assist there. And we go 2-0 up halfway through the first half here at home park. And maybe this attacking mindset is what will kick us into gear here 
in the Premier League off the back of a bit of a poor run of form coming in to today's episode. Farias there got brought down a little bit cynically from Endo and someone else, but thankfully the ball did fall to Morgan Whitaker. He puts that one home, and we are now 2 0 up, and hopefully from here we can hold on to the score. I'm now a little bit tempted to drop back to a positive mindset, but to be fair, attacking's working at the moment, and thankfully our centre backs deal with that ball before it can find Cody Gakpo, albeit ball played over the top there. Easy enough for Allison to control, but really good start to this game off the back of that gift that was given to Ben Wayne. We grab another one, the Wayne train at the moment, with a goal and an assist, albeit Liverpool here do get a chance to play out from the back, but so far putting good pressure on them. Virgil had a bit of a shocker for that first goal, might not be enjoying playing on that yellow car, but now Mo Salah, he is on the ball, someone we need to give some big attention to. Graves there nearly gets it back from now. Good one, two between him and McAllister. He gets in behind our defence and just beats Cooper there at that far post. And maybe we just need to calm things down a little bit. 2-1 maybe should have gone to positive a little bit sooner. But to be fair, we have looked pretty sharp so far on that attacking mentality. But unfortunately, Mo Salah there just spreads the needle after Liverpool get that ball back. Despite the fact that Graves put a pretty good foot in there to briefly get the ball back for us. But unfortunately, we couldn't retain it. That makes it 2-1. Hopefully, we might find a way to get our cushion goal back. Buckley plays that one to Kesler Hayden. Morgan Whitaker makes his way inside the box, tries to look there for the top left corner, but Alison Becker does come up with a good save to keep it at 2-1. But at the moment, we will sneak our way up to 10th from the Premier League table. That would be nice going in to a couple of more winnable fixtures. Now the Wayne train, will he try and rocket that one into the back of the net? He doesn't. He plays it to Cullen right from a tight angle. He'll beat Becker, just put that one inside the far post. 3-1, and we're looking pretty good here in a game I was definitely not expecting to win. That's good because we get a cushion goal back shortly off the back of that goal to Mo Salah, but Farias plays this one over for the Wayne train. Fort Lee might be looking for the top right corner, but smartly he finds right and a ton of space. Gomez trying to mark him today, I presume, as a left back. Indeed, that is the case in place of the injured Robertson. Puts that one away, very similar finish to Salah, but down the other end, and we make it 3-1. And despite the fact we've only had five shots in this game, we are 3-1 ahead. Now, Gakpo's down there. That could be a serious injury. We'll see what happens, but Diaz does have a chance there. Tries to drill that one bottom right corner. Thankfully, Kuba comes up with a good save. The highlight ends. will be interesting to see if that was an injury there to Cody Gakpo. Off the back of that too, we might just drop back to positive briefly to see if this corner will be stopped. Unfortunately, we do still see it. Also interesting to see the West Ham with a 2-0 lead over Crystal Palace. And we do deal with that corner. And now Farias actually have a chance to do something for us here on the counter-attack. The Argentinian central attacking midfielder but plays that one back to Graves. Back up to Farias. Will this highlight continue? Poor pass there looking for right. And now Liverpool do get a chance to play out from the back. But this is Quite a long highlight, but Liverpool are keeping the ball, so a bit worried. They might find a way to grab a goal back. Luis Diaz just plays that one back eventually to Joe Gomez. Now Virgil van Dijk on that yellow card. Trent plays it across the centre field, and eventually that highlight does stop in the end. A little bit of a waste of time off the back of that chance that did come off the back of that potential injury to Gody Gakpo, but now it's Kesler Hayden who finds some space off the back of the front down that right-hand side. It does get deflected there, that cross, but thankfully falls rather kindly to us, and we can keep position now. Buckley plays that forward to the Wayne train, goes all the way back to Gibson, the Wayne train, having a much better game than he's had for quite a while now in this one. He's stepping up against big opposition, but Gibson back on the ball. Buckley, now Randall plays that one to Farias, just taking our time here late in the first half as we're about to make our way into three minutes of added time. Now Williams, the former Liverpool man, of course, makes his way into the opposition half, finds Kesler Hayden, our right back, also playing well. He just takes his time, plays that one back to Randall. Now Buckley, just outside the box, Randall plays one into the mix there for Farias. He puts it away, and no sign of an offside flag, and we might go into the sheds here with a 4-1 lead, and this would be some upset, this, against the Liverpool team, who are second in the league, albeit, as you saw before, actually not going quite as well as I did anticipate they were, but Farias there gets again a shot, which goes across the face of goal, and Allison yet again can't save it. Somehow Farias gets in behind that Liverpool defence, and it might even get better here, going into the second half as we make our way out from the back from a goal kick with only one minute left of added time, but unfortunately lose touch there. I believe that was from Whitaker down our right-hand side on Liverpool. 
might get a chance to yet again grab a goal back. There was the goal scorer, Salah, touches that one back to Canade and eventually finds its way back out to him. At the moment, Liverpool are keeping position well, but hopefully we can hold on to this free goal advantage going in to the second half. Nice foot in there from Gibson, but now a chance for Liverpool as some players do just get in behind our jumbled up defence a little bit. Mo Salah in there for McAllister, the players that linked up for that first goal. Trent squares that one for Sobber sliding out Endo. Outside the box, tries to drill that one bottom right corner, but thankfully it comes off the post and that does end a pretty long first half. Liverpool, definitely the team who have been on the front foot with a lot more shots, but thankfully we've got the same amount on target and have made them count a 4-1 lead going in a two half time. And to be fair, everyone out there doing a good job as well. So I don't think we need to make any changes going in to the second half. In fact, I won't even change the opposition instructions because things are going so well. And hopefully we can hold on to this free goal advantage over the Reds. This would be a massive result and get us charging up the Premier League table off the back of that poor runner form that we did have coming into the start of today's episode. And even then, it was just one loss and a couple of draws. But now John Buckley early in the second half is down to a red heart. We'll play things safe with this lead that we do have. Tom Bischoff, very able replacement, can come on for him. We're still around about 40 minutes left, but it does actually look like here we are on the front foot early in the second half. Maybe that first half has just got Jürgen a bit too angry. Now Bischoff plays that one into Farias. It somehow makes its way through the hands of Alison Becker into the top left corner. 5-1 Plymouth Argyle with still over a half hour left, and surely that's the goal that's going to seal us three points from this one. And this attacking mentality is certainly working this game from the get-go. Liverpool don't know what have hit them, albeit they did help us out early with that Wayne Train goal off the back of a Virgil van Dijk era, but still off the back of that. The same amount of shots on target as they've had, but we've been oh so efficient off the back of that now. A couple of players down to Red Hearts, both our wing backs. Sebastian Halsner can come on at right back, and Bali Mumba at left back. Still got about 30 minutes left, and two more subs left to make, and shortly off the back of those substitutions, a chance for us here to play out from the back at the moment. We'll still stay attacking, because it is working at the moment. doesn't seem to be affecting our defence too much in a game against a very threatening attacking team in Liverpool. And they do try and clear their lines there. Don't do a great job of it. Now Bischoff, he is inside the box. Randall starts to make his way into the mixture. I thought there he got bought down, but apparently play on. It was actually Whitaker. He ended up back on the ball. Chance near far post for the Wayne train with a header, but unfortunately just puts that one wide. It is still 5-1, but to be fair, this is the kind of situation where we can afford to miss those chances just a little bit more. Now, Adam Randall is on a red heart. We might just wait, though, until someone else does go down to a red so we can make our last two subs at the same time. Chance there for Kanate from a corner. Thankfully, though, that comes off the crossbar, doesn't quite hit the target, and we are still up by five goals to one. It means that Liverpool don't get a chance to make a comeback. And now for Kundo Farias and Cullum Wright are both on red hearts. To be fair, Farias is on a hat trick. So I think we're going to take off here. Callum Wright for Springett and also Mamas. He will come on for Randall. There'll be all our subs used with 20 minutes left. And it looks like here we're going to pick up a very impressive win over Liverpool. Definitely so far our best performance since we have come up to the Premier League. And it looks like here it is going to be fairly comfortable as well. Albeit now in the last 10 minutes in Liverpool do have a free kick. But we hit that one away and Springett off a chance to do something here on the counter attack. Lots of space. Down that left-hand side, starts to make his way inside the box. Squares that one for Farias. Big chance there for a hat-trick. Puts it wide, but even then, he was offside. So it does stay 5-1. To be fair, stats-wise, this is evening up a lot more in the second half in terms of all the other ones, except shots on target. To be fair, that was quite even at half-time. But now with a couple of minutes left in Liverpool, we're on the attack. They give us the ball, and now Whitaker links up nicely there with the Wayne train, plays that one back in for Farias, and Springett does get in behind, albeit I thought he was offside, but they're not even going to check it, and Tony Springett off the bench will pick up a goal for Kundo Farias, is pulling the strings out there, as is the Wayne train, and that makes it 6-1, lovely first time pass there from Whitaker from that long ball forward in the Wayne train to Farias, and Springett has somehow kept on side there, I think that's because of Virgil, who is not having a good game at all at centre-back. Buries that one in the right-hand corner, and that makes it 6-1. And we might even get this to 7-1. Hello, Man United fans. You might enjoy this, but Springett is on the ball. Unfortunately, a loose touch there. Endo can win it back for Liverpool. Darwin there, nice bit of skill to play that back to Salah, but to be fair, probably not the time or place for that when you are losing by six goals to one. But now Diego Jota does get in behind, puts this far post for Darwizzi. 
but it just goes over the bar from a tight angle and we are still leading by six goals to one. And shortly off the back of that, there is a free kick in our favor the second game today. Full of action, unfortunately, try and free the needle there. I think that was Mamas, can't quite do it. So Liverpool get a chance yet again to grab what will these days only be a consolation goal as we have battered them here at home park. They are definitely struggling on the road in the month of November and into early December. Now Darwin makes his way forward, does the Uruguayan just inside the box. Good work there though from Halsner to win that ball back for us and a good chance here for us to do something on the counter-attack, albeit Whitaker can't quite link up with the Wayne train. In fact, it was Farias there who was looking to get us going on the counter-attack. So Liverpool might get one more chance to score two goals compared to our six. Diego Jota from a tight angle, but Cooper with a good save to keep it at 6-1. Cooper actually having a very good game with an 8.0 rating. To be fair, haven't seen too many of his saves. That's a high rating for our goalkeeper. Kanata yet again can't hit the target from a set piece. And this game will continue for now. We nearly give Liverpool a chance there to do what we did to them in the first half. And now we're just looking a little bit shaky late in this game. Chance for Darwin Nunez. But yet again, Cooper with a big save to be fair. If he was going to let some in, this would be the time when we have a big lead. But it does look like he's playing himself into some good form. Is our homegrown goalkeeper. They go far post yet again. But this time, Reese Williams. We'll head that one away. Tony Springett keeps it under control. So it does mean that Liverpool stats have been boosted up quite a bit late in that game. With all that pressure. And despite the fact their XG is higher than ours. We have freshed them by six goals to one. A goal to Wayne Train as well. As an assist for Kundo Farias with two. Also goals to Cullum Wright. Morgan Whitaker and Tony Springett off the bench. And that is a convincing one. As you can see. Four of Liverpool's usual best players there. In Van Dijk and Allison. Did have shockers, so no doubt that did help us. But that is by far our best performance so far this season. And maybe a sign we need to keep this attacking mentality going for a little while off the back of this game. So if we can beat Liverpool 6-1, no doubt we should be able to beat most teams in the Premier League. But that is a big upset result. We pick up our second win in a row. A thumping 6-1 win over Liverpool. So a superb episode to end this week of the Wayne Train. We finally get back in winning touch with that 2-1 win over West Ham. We left it late, but then absolutely smashed Liverpool 6-1 at home park. Certainly fortunate based on stats, but very efficient. And we did have the ball and also both our strikers back in goal scoring touch as well, including the Wayne Train who picked up that first goal, which did get us on our way against Liverpool. And that does mean we are now all the way up to ninth on the Premier League table. And also that does help out our goal differential quite significantly as well. So there is a chance we could work our way up that table if we can win the rest of our games in the month of December. And to be fair, the only tough one I think out of those is next up. And we do take on Brighton. Of course, those guys did beat us in our first game in the Carabao Cup. But that will do it for this week of the Wayne Train. Certainly ending on a high with that 6-1 win over Liverpool. Also that 2-1 win over West Ham. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back at the start of next week. In the month of January, as I said, transfer window-wise, we might need a new right back if our mummy Toure does leave. We'll see how much money we do have off the back of that and maybe can get in a third-choice goalkeeper. That might not be the worst idea and also see what the situation is with Jordio Plagazello if we do look to get someone in for him as well, if we can get rid of him just a little bit early. So a bit that we could do there in the transfer window with that £9.5 million give or take. We'll come back in the month of January, run you guys through if we can continue this form in the month of December. As you can see off the back of that Brighton game, a couple that do look very winnable off the back of those couple of performances, especially Nottingham Forest at home, Sheffield United away and Fulham away as well. Those do look like very winnable games before a tough double against Chelsea and Manchester City. But we have already played those two teams on camera so far this season. So I think we'll come back for our first game in the FA Cup. We'll take on Blackburn Rovers, a team we're quite familiar with from the championship last season. And then we'll take on a Crystal Palace team who are in and around where we are at the moment on the Premier League table. That one at home park, hopefully we can make up for, I believe, a draw against them when we played them at Selhurst Park. Indeed, that was the case in that block of draws that we did have those rough results coming into the start 
of today's episode, but we'll come back, hopefully make our way through our first FA Cup game this season, and then take on Crystal Palace in the Premier League and see where that does leave us for the remainder of the season. Also, give you guys an update on what is going on in the transfer window. So until then, at the start of next week, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.